People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. To have a special life, you have to do special things. And that usually means putting in the work and loving it. No one is going to create the future that you want for you. We get one opportunity to come this way. We get one shot, we got one life to live. Life is too short to make excuses. I want you to close your eyes and visualize your dream. I, I need you to get out of your comfort zone. If we all woke up ordinary, we all off to the same start. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. It is a decision that you have to make within yourself. No one is responsible for that. Stop waiting to feel like it. Stop waiting until you see it. Failure is only permanent if you choose not to get back up. And what you do today will determine your future. And I'm asking you, what do you see in the future for you? What brought you here today? What caused you to get up? You're closer than you've ever been before. You have to do me a favor. Those 15 minutes are not worth the rest of your life. It's not easy, but it's worth it. You woke up this morning to chase your dream until you catch it. You're gonna have to sacrifice who you used to be. When you wanna sleep, you have to wake up. So don't run from difficulty. Run to it. Because it's always darkest before the dawn. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, give it 120%. Every day, every single day is a new beginning. So take a deep breath. Inhale, exhale. It's a new day, a new opportunity. So if you get some setbacks, embrace them. Sure, every day is not going to be a good day for you. Every day is not going to always happen for you. But it's always something happening. But you got to make it happen for the right reasons. For every day of your life, you must continue to believe in yourself. For every day of your life, you must have enough faith and understanding that it's up to you to make that difference count. You got to realize your only competition is really yourself. They may be winning on the outside, but if you're losing on the inside, how can you overcome that? I'm gonna tell you how you can overcome it. Shut down each and every negative thought that comes into your brain. Each and every time it pops into your brain. It's a five in the morning and you told yourself the night before you were getting up today. And when it's time to get up and your brain starts saying, no, I'm not ready yet. Just, just, just five more minutes. No, 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 just, just, just 10 more minutes. No, no, no just 15 more minutes, you have to shut it down and say, we're getting up right now. Five second rule, like Mel Robbins says, you got five seconds to act on your impulse or it's gone. So we're not waiting five seconds. We're gonna rise and grind. We're gonna rise and shine. We're gonna rise and climb. We're gonna rise and give everything we got. So you always find yourself starting off on the right path. You start off, you're feeling good, you're running, you're doing everything that you need to do. But it starts to get harder. Things starting to push you back. Life starts to push you back. People start to push you back. Everything around you starts to crumble. You have nothing else left to give. But then you got to find something else. You got to turn on that grind switch. You got to get down and dirty and nasty if you got to. You got to do what necessarily is going to take for you to get what you want. You got to go out there with everything you got. It's time for you to set yourself on fire and live life with passion. 
and put yourself in a position to do the things that you want to do on a daily basis. Rise and grind. Because the mindset of greatness knows that adversity breeds resilience. And that struggle leads to its next level success and bona fide brilliance. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Get up, get up, get up. Give every ounce of your heart, give every ounce of your soul. See, I woke up early, went to bed late. I'm in grind mode. You gotta see the sun in yourself to live in shine mode. You gotta understand it's not a sprint, it's a marathon in due time mode. If you're not where you wanna be in your life, it's time for you to live in redesign mode, refine mode. Don't you understand you were put here to win? Don't be afraid of the hard work. Don't be afraid to grind a little bit harder. Don't be afraid to sweat a little bit. It's okay, man. And I guarantee you will change your life, change the way you think, and you put yourself in position to expand, not shrink, rise and grind. See, the mindset of greatness is obsessed with winning and it sees the ultimate outcome right from the beginning. If you can't get up and get after it, how do you expect to win? If you can't get up and get after it, how do you expect to go to another level? If you can't get up and get after it, how do you expect to raise the championship banner on your life? It's time for you to change your perception because the reality is you got to put something in to get something out. You're going to have those bad days, but keep on grinding. You're going to want to quit, but keep on grinding. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important part of your life. It is a decision that you have to make within yourself. No one is responsible for that. When pressure begins to build called life, because life is going to bring you ups and downs and mountains and valleys. And I'm sure some of you in here, your backstory is full of ups and downs and good days and bad days. I bet some of you in here, your backstory is full of a lot more difficulties and some traumas and some things. It's hard for others to comprehend. See, pressure, it can create diamonds or it can bust a pipe. Pressure's not the problem. Listen, to be honest, man, your life, what you faced in 2020 and 2021 and what some of you have experienced the last several years in your life, it's not going to be the most difficult thing that you probably have ever had to face. Maybe for some of you, it's been extremely painful. Maybe you've lost someone close to you of a trauma or an abuse or something really painful has happened. But for most of us, 2020 and 2021 won't be the most difficult thing that you've ever faced in your life. Life is about these ups and these downs, and it's about pressure and insecurities and just challenges. The challenge for you and me is what will we do with the pressure that we're in? Will we allow the pressure to bust the pipe, or will we step into uncomfortable, step into our story, and to realize the pressure, the challenge, the difficult situation, if I grab a hold of it and take control of what I can control, which is me and my reaction and how I respond, that pressure can become something valuable like a diamond because there's a lot of characteristics and behaviors and habits that we develop it's not that we set out and we began to have negative thought patterns and we didn't set out to have negative habits a lot of times we're around certain people and by influence by the exposure by the ability of us to be in close to people we sometimes just pick up tendencies I'm sure some of you got some friends that say certain phrases or they talk a certain type of way and next thing you know you're kind of saying the same phrase you're kind of saying the kind of same tendency and maybe even your mom or your dad are like, you sound just like so-and-so, right? Because we catch up and we catch things from each other. And so for me, what I caught from my dad when I was a kid, it was his coping mechanisms. You know, like I always say, it was the fake face. It was the fake smile. It was acting like everything's good on the surface. But when I was alone and I was looking in the mirror, man, I was struggling, but I was silent. I was screaming, but I was quiet. The truth of the matter is, I got to a place, even though I was in prison, 
I wasn't going to wait till tomorrow or next semester or next year or whenever I got released to begin my change. Right now, in the middle of my external uncomfortability, I was going to make a stand and I realized hard work works, make good choices, good things happen. There's never a wrong time to do what's right. Hard work and good choices will always create opportunities for your dreams, your plans, the things you've thrown against the wall to begin to be activated. I was in prison. My external situation seemed pretty good difficult it was uncomfortable but in the moment I was saying active of talking and communicating and making choices and hard work and good choices will create opportunities in the middle of your chaos in the middle of your storm for me I didn't serve 15 years because I would still be incarcerated until 2024 I've actually been released and been walking and living life and doing this since 2013 See, I got released 11 and a half years early. What happened is I found the courage in the middle of an uncomfortable situation in a storm that seemed hopeless, to be honest, to not be afraid to face the thing that I was the most afraid of, which was me. Because I promise you, transparency and accountability, using the people around you, but then also realizing that we've got skin in the game, which is called action, which is called choices, and doing our best to do the next right thing and treat people the way that we want to be treated. Doors and opportunities will always open in the middle of your store. And I care what you have to say. And I care what your experiences have been. And I care about your journey. Don't lose the ability to know that you are a critical thinker. You have the ability to process, to think, to rationalize, to hear data, and to make conclusions. It's inside of you. Don't settle for anything less than real and authentic. You want to go somewhere you've never gone? You got to do something you've never done. You got to say something you've never said. You got to go to a place in you that you've never even been. You're not sentenced to this life this way. You chose it. I feel like on this side of COVID, like I've tried to even hit a different gear. Because one thing that I've realized over the last several years in my life, things that I take for granted can be taken from me. And so now any moment that I get a chance just to kind of lecture or to communicate or to challenge somebody to maybe do what I long for people to do, for me to do, not even you, but for me to even do. And that's to live a life where I wake up and I look in the mirror and I am determined to confront myself. I'm determined to have conflict resolution inside of myself. When I'm open and I'm honest with my behaviors and how I'm operating and what I'm doing with my time and my energy and my focus. See, let me share something with you. The easiest thing I've ever done was to earn a million dollars. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe it could happen to me. We all want to do something. We all want to be somebody. We all want to go somewhere. If these things are going to happen, we've got to stop habitually gravitating to excuse. You've got a destiny to fulfill. You've got a purpose to walk into. You've got a test to pass. You've got dots to connect, rooms to walk in, stages to stand on, and tables to sit down at. But you got to put a new mind in you. You got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking. I'm ready to do this for my family. I'm ready to do this for my mother. I'm ready to win for my father. I'm ready to make history and ready to do something that nobody ever thought I could do. And we mistake the fact that we're supposed to be comfortable 24-7. Well, let me tell you something. Comfortable is equivalent to complacent. It's not always about the accomplishment. It's about the effort. I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I want to take the calculated risk. To dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the 
challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the stale karma of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. Who doubts you? I'm worried when you doubt you. Because when you doubt you, you can't get nothing done. When you doubt you, every little thing that gets in your way turns you back. When you doubt you, all of a sudden things just seem to be harder. But out of everybody who doubts you, you can't doubt you. You got to believe in you. You got to believe in your ability. You got to believe that you can win. We get one opportunity to come this way. We get one shot. We got one life to live. Life is too short to make excuses. So I just came to talk to the game changers and to the change agents who are willing to confront any part of you that's not speaking to your madly, wildly amazing future. When somebody is in love with who they've been called to become, what they've been called to fulfill, what they've been destined to do, there is no day off. I'm telling you, don't wait another moment. Don't wait another day. Don't wait another minute. It's lonely. It's challenging. It requires discipline. It requires perseverance. It's a mindset. It's not over until I win. People that make excuses are not connected to their destination. They don't have an end game. They don't have a goal. You have allowed yourself to become a weak link covered under the blanket of excuses. But I'm just wondering if there's anybody here that has a dream. I am ready. Come on, come on. I am ready. Come on, let me hear you. I am ready. One more time. I am ready. Consider this your wake-up call. What most people fail to realize is that pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. There is no path in life without pain. Whatever it is that you're going after, whoever it is that you've been destined to become, you cannot have it. You will not become it without pain. You will face challenges and difficulties and giants regardless if you are single, if you are married, if you are a stay-at-home mom, a stay-at-home father, if you are an entrepreneur, if you're working a nine-to-five, if you're an educator, if you are an athlete, if you are a musician, a singer, a producer, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are doing, pain is inevitable. If I'm going to hurt like this, if I'm going to bleed like this, if I'm going to cry like this, let me cry because I'm in the best shape of my life. Let me cry because I'm conditioned to weather the uphill war. Let me cry because I'm building my relationship. I'm building my business. I'm building my legacy. Let me cry because it hurt, but there is a reward on the other end of my pain. Let me cry tears because I passed the test, because I gave it everything I had. Choose your heart. Everything in life comes with hardship. Make a decision. At some juncture, you will encounter pain. And the moment that you get acquainted with pain, you get acquainted with hardship. You realize that no matter what you do, no matter how much you study, no matter how much you plan, you will not be able to avoid a measure of pain. I don't care what it is, losing weight, I don't care what it is, a, a new eating paradigm, a new relationship paradigm, new thoughts, new behaviors, it doesn't matter what you're after, what you're looking to become, if you don't go to the gym, it's going to hurt you, if you go to the gym, it's going to hurt you, your muscles are going to tear, but on the other side of that pain, there is a reward, there isn't any regret, you won't regret taking care of your body, on the other side of making those healthy decisions, there is a reward! It's the reward of discipline. It's the reward of longevity. It's the reward of influence. It's the reward of power. Do you want results? Do you want a reward? 
Or do you want regrets? The decision is yours. It's all hard, so choose your heart. Pain is inevitable and it is unavoidable. Pick your pain. Everybody's got a plan until life knocks them out because we weren't ready for the pain. And when the pain came, we did not process it. Processing pain is a skill set you've got to acquire. It's a type of currency. If you want the future, if you want next level, if you want tomorrow, if you want to manifest, if you want this thing, I don't care what it is, then you're going to have to get acquainted with pain. The pain of discipline, the pain of growth, the pain of learning, the pain of giving, the pain of forgiving. It all hurts. So pick your pain, choose your heart. Because at some juncture in life, at some corner you're going to turn, you are going to encounter pain. And you've got to process that pain well. Hear me when I say it. Pain is unavoidable. It's hard to let go of the past. It's hard to give sometimes of your time, your talent, and your treasure. It's hard to balance work life. It's hard to acquire new skills. It's hard to be stagnant. It's hard to be a workhorse. It's hard to be lazy. It's hard to learn how to manage and cultivate relationships. It's hard to learn from your experiences. It's hard to turn your mess into your message. It's all hard. It's hard to hold on. It's hard to let go. But there's a reward on the other end of many of these hardships. And you've got to choose reward or regret. There is always reward and regret attached to every decision that you make. Hope. Hold on. Pain ends. Pain does have an expiration date. And when that pain ends, another one will surface, but you will be strong enough because you endured the current pain well. Everybody wants resurrection, but nobody wants the pain of dying to themselves. There's a pain that hurts you, and there's a pain that changes you. So today, all I want you to do is make a decision to choose your heart. Rise and grind. You can't lay around a 12 each and every day and expect greatness to come your way. It don't work like that. So you get out of this life exactly what you put into this life. Control, all delete. Control yourself, alter your thinking, and delete negativity, period. It's about manifestation. What have I been destined to become? Wake up! There's always another level. Life is not responsible for how you take care of your own mindset. Life is not responsible for you having a positive attitude. You're not dead. You still have life. Your heart is still beating. And the journey must continue. Stop drowning and learn how to swim. Don't blame life because you fall down. Don't blame life because that relationship didn't work out. Don't blame life because that job did not turn out. It is not life that's holding you back. You just got to be a little bit tougher than your circumstances. You can't concern yourself about things that you have no control over. What are you made of? What is your DNA? What is your mentality? What are the skill sets? Come on, start to write down the vision. What are your goals? What are your financial goals? What are your relational goals? What are your spiritual goals? Come on, start thinking about these things. You're still alive for a reason. Somebody died today, but you're still here listening. In this very moment, you have an opportunity. Seize the opportunity. When you take that kind of action, when you have that dedication, when you show that kind of passion, when you put in that kind of work, you can't help but win. 
because limits exist only in the mind. You will meet many challenges. Many things will come at you. There are going to be times that you're going to want to give up, but you don't have the permission to do so. You must carry on the good fight. What good is your greatness if you don't stand on it? How can you hold on to who you really are inside if you let everything else tell you that you're not worthy? And you got two options. You can give up or get up. This is your day. Get up and beat yourself from yesterday. What are you made of? What is your DNA? What is your mentality? What are the skill sets? Come on, start to write down the vision. I need you to rise and grind. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I said it all starts with your mindset. See, the true definition of mindset is the driving force in the quest for success and achievement. A mindset that combines discipline, strength, confidence, and ambition is a powerful mindset. Be faithful. Be productive. Put away the destructive mindset. Let the world know that you matter. Believe in every step that you take. I know you've got some doubt and you've got some uncertainty and you hate the image that you see in the mirror and you hate the way your money looks and your relationships look and people that you've given your all to keep walking out on you. I know you feel stuck in reverse. I know you feel like you're underpaid and undervalued and overlooked. But listen, this is the day that everything changes. Get up! Rise and grind! Get up and get after it. That's what's going to separate you from the pack. You're not scared to get uncomfortable. Rise and grind and wake up with a renewed spirit. Wake up with a renewed passion. Just need you to be 1% better than you were yesterday. If you can be 1% better than you were yesterday, you're making progress. I told you, I wake up at three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning. Every day, three o'clock in the morning. And so there's some days when I wake up. I just woke up recently and it was 2.45. I looked at the clock and I said, look, between me and you, we got an agreement, it's three o'clock. It's 2.45 right now. Like, listen to me very close. Technically, technically I have 15 minutes. Technically I have 15 more minutes. I never told the world that I wake up at 2.45, ever. I say three o'clock, but when I looked at the clock, the clock said 2.45, and the average person in me said, E.T., just pull the covers back over here, it's okay. You got 15 minutes. But the phenomenal in me said, E.T., if you go back to sleep for those 15 minutes, there's no guarantee you're gonna get up at three o'clock. If you go back to sleep right now, you might wake up and it's four o'clock. You might wake up and it's five o'clock. You might wake up and it's six o'clock. All you have is right now. Are those 15 minutes that sweet that you're gonna push back your dream, that you're gonna push back your goal? Everything you've ever wanted, son, you're right there. What is it? What is that one thing that you're saying that I am going to get this thing done and I'm gonna make my dreams become a reality? So I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you not only to want to be a beast when you leave this place, huge favor. E.T. is asking you of one thing. When you leave this place, I need you to get in beast mode and stay in beast mode. You got one life to live, it's time to get it done. Are you tired of just thinking about it? You're focused on the risk more than you are the reward. You're focused on the pain of the process more than you are the glory on the other side. You're listening to the wrong people. You're listening to the wrong voices. You are subscribed to the wrong programs of thinking. And you stop waiting to feel like it. Stop waiting for the conditions to be perfect. 
They're never going to be perfect. You're not going to always feel like it. You're not going to always see it. You're not going to always have a resource. You're not going to always have a handout. The question is, how bad do you want this? How bad do you want this? Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to let go of some things? Are you willing to put the work in? Are you ready to be consistent? Are you tired of this version of yourself? The prize goes to the hardest worker in the room. As an individual, I need you to get your schedule up. I need you to get your life up. I need you to get your words up. I need you to get your heart up. I need you to get your action up. I need you to get to a place that every single thing that you do is phenomenal so that the life you want to live, you can actually live that life. You're not putting forth 120%. You're not all in. Let me tell you something. If you get to that point, if you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're going to do, you're going to get to the next level. All right, so let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. Stop waiting to feel it. At the end of the day, you can listen to a million motivational speeches, but you are going to have to wake up and make a decision to get it done. If you can hear my voice, if you are tired of where you are, if you are tired of not hitting your targets, if you are tired of not being aimed and intentional and assertive and consistent, you have everything you need to get started. Stop waiting for the weather to change in your life. Stop waiting for the perfect conditions. Stop waiting for a handout. Stop waiting for everybody to believe in you and cheer for you and affirm you. Your dreams are phenomenal. In your dreams, your bank account is phenomenal. The life that you have for yourself is phenomenal. The things that you do, the way that you live, what you have is phenomenal. But you as an individual, you're average. And what I'm challenging you to do is to go from average to good, from good to great, and from great to phenomenal. Enough is enough. I'm getting out of this place and I got stuff to do. I've got assignments to finish. I've got a destiny to fulfill. I am sick and tired. I'm no longer willing to tolerate this place of misery and pain. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a goal. Everybody wants something in life. But many of you in this room right now, your beast mode is idle. Your beast mode is not turned on. And when you leave this place, I'm telling you, your life is going to go to a whole other level if you can learn to turn that switch on and keep that switch on. Everybody's got purpose, right? Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got something they have to pass or achieve or become. But we are generationally programmed to love convenience. And the truth of the matter is, it is so convenient to make an excuse I want to give you just a few things that you can do to help you to stop making excuses, to help you to stop habitually gravitating to the place called convenience. Number one, you got to stop comparing yourself to everybody else. Rule number one, kill the comparison game. Well, I don't, I don't do it like them and I, I don't say it like them and I don't, I'm not as tall as them and I'm not as strong as them and I, I don't have the money that they have. I don't have the resources that they have. I don't, well, the, the, the reason why I, I, I couldn't do it is because my parents weren't there for me and the, the reason why I didn't get to go to college on a full ride because my coach, he didn't create the highlight reel for, for the sports scholarship. The, the reason why, and so we, we're, we're just programmed to blame everybody else. When will you look in the mirror and stop comparing yourself to everybody else? We compare ourselves to the way people look. We compare our stories to their stories and our relationship to their relationship. Every single day, the excuses that we make are like a warm blanket pooled over us, covering up the underlining issue of fear, the spirit, the personality of fear. The truth is that the reason why you haven't done it is because you're afraid. 
Maybe if you could just listen to this a couple times, maybe you'll start making so many excuses because the excuse is nothing but a cosmetic. It's makeup, it's a blanket, it's a convenience that we habitually gravitate to because it just makes us feel better. But the underlining issue, the underlining cancer, the inflammation is fear. We're afraid. Be committed to being a champion. Be committed to being a warrior. Be committed to keeping your eyes focused on the prize. This is what you work for. You got to stay hungry. You got to trust yourself. You got to believe in yourself. You got to keep running that mile. When you run that mile, run another mile. When you start to feel tired, get into that second and third gear. When you feel that your grip is getting weak, Find something else to get that grip strong again. Don't quit on you. Don't quit on this opportunity. Don't quit on your success. Don't quit on being the best of yourself. Why are you here? Take a good look at what you see in front of you. Look around you. Realize that at the end of it all, you must understand if it goes down, you must make sure that you are the last man or woman that is standing. Standing strong. Standing hard. And ready for whatever may come. When somebody is in love with who they've been called to become, what they've been called to fulfill, what they've been destined to do, there is no day off. There are no light, listen, I'm not a light switch. You can't turn me off. I can never get turned off. Every single day, I'm given everything I have. That's how big my dream is. And so there's no excuse. There's no pain. There's no dilemma. There are no speed bumps. There's no distraction that can turn me off. I'm not a light switch. You can't turn me off. I want this thing every single day. Let the world see something they have never seen before in you. Let them witness something special, something unique. You're not done yet. Keep going. Keep fighting. Keep pushing. Keep breathing. Understand, this is the time, and this time is yours. Earn your keep. Earn your victory. And when you cross that finish line, look up to the heavens with your hands up high and take a deep breath because you made it. If it's important to you, you're gonna find a way. You won't have to look for a resource. You will become resourceful. It's not always about the accomplishment. It's about the effort. All right, so watch this, three things, work. So what do I mean when I say work on your work? First, you gotta study your work. Are you hearing me like you going to work every single day and you're not getting no better at it because you're not studying it. Like literally, you gotta study your own work. I don't know if you play football or basketball. If you a teacher, look, if you a teacher, get you a camera and put it in the room. Stop letting the principal study your work. Stop letting the, the assistant principal, stop letting the administrator study your work. You should be studying your own work. You should be your own performance coach. You should be looking at what you do, how you do it, when you do it, why you do it. You should study your work. Number two, listen to me. We're taking it to another level. I critique your work, all right? I'm talking about examine it, measure it. So what I want you to do is from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, from year to year, I want you to critique your work. I'm my greatest critic. I'm not relying on comments on YouTube. I'm not relying on the, uh, the feedback of others. I'm trying to constantly not just look at my work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not just study it, but I'm trying to critique it. I'm trying to evaluate it. I'm trying to measure it. Because there's no way you can get to another level if you can't measure it. You got to know where you are first to know where you're going. So I need you to critique your work. And the last one, I need you to reflect on your work. I need you just to step back from your own work sometime. Just step back from your work and reflect on it. Like just really think about it, right? Think about how you do what you do. 
think about all the movement, like really just step back, step back and kind of just think, all right? So I need you to work on your work. Again, I want you to study it. I want you to critique it, right? Then I want you to reflect on your work. And I'm telling you, if you can do this, you're going to go to a whole other level. So stop just going to work. Stop just doing what you've been told to do. Stop just, just going to work. I want you to work on your work every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year. You should be better at what you do. Stop looking for a promotion. Stop looking for a raise. If you're not going to increase your performance, nothing else around you is going to increase. Look, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Do you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe? Because I hear what you said. E.T., I don't have no more room for growth. E.T., I can't take it to the... E.T., I've done everything. If you're still alive, you've not done everything you could do. If you're still alive, there's room for growth. I understand that I got to upgrade, that everything I do got every day, every week, every month, every year, it's got to get better. And so for some of you, you're going to work. I don't know if it's basketball, if it's soccer, if it's sales, your education, I don't know what you're doing. But if you teach and you're the same teacher this year than you were last year, that's a problem. And so I need increased performance because once you increase your performance, everything else increases. So here's the problem. This ain't for the weak and the uncommitted, okay? So mama, if they need to cut it off, tell them to cut off when you want to succeed. It. Don't watch it no more. But mama, it ain't no middle ground, mama. You either here or you're there. It's no middle ground. And so what I'm telling you is that you can't count the cost. You, when, you, when, you, when you want something bad, you can't count the cost. Because if you count the cost and you see how much it costs, you might quit. You might give up. So you got to go in knowing that I don't count the cost. I do as many push-ups as it takes, as many sit-ups as it takes, as many reps as it takes. I study as long as it takes. I pay whatever the price is. Why? Because if I start counting the cost, I might quit. I might give up. I might surrender. Don't count the cost. This one is, I, listen to me, you don't count how many breaths you take. You don't count it. You don't count the cost on this one. Now, I'm going to say two names, LeBron James and Dirk. All right? Both won a championship. Dirk won his championship. And listen to me closely. Dirk got the trophy. Look, Dirk at the club with the trophy. And if you look at Dirk a year after the championship, what do you see? You see absolutely nothing. If you look at his assist, if you look at his rebounds, if you look at his scoring, if you look at everything a year later, he actually went down. Ever since he won a championship, he's literally going down. When you look at LeBron James, LeBron won a title, but if you study LeBron, everything went up, everything. His assists went up, all right? His scoring went up, his defense went up. My man's shooting percentage has gone up. Everything has gone up. If you want more money, if you want a promotion, if you want to leave a legacy, you got to increase. You can't stay where you are and think things around you are going to grow. If you keep doing what you've always done, good or bad, you'll keep getting what you've always got. You just do what you got to do on this one. And then you look back when it's all over and you see the rewards. You look back and you see the accomplishments. You don't count it. You just look back and you see that you succeeded. So if you give me increased performance, hear me increased performance is going to increase your pay increased performance is going to increase your response nobody's going to give you more responsibility if you can't handle the responsibility that you have the future is very expensive i, I don't know what it is that you want to do but everybody's got something they want to do everybody's got something they want to become Everybody's got somewhere they believe they've been destined to go. And oftentimes we don't hit these targets because we're not considering the cost. Then I just want to share with you things that you need to start sacrificing right now. Number one, your time. You got to get used to sacrificing your time. If you're going to achieve it, if you're going to become it, if you're going to go somewhere, then you're going to learn how to have to sacrifice your time. You can't have the future and you don't know how to wake up at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. You can't have the future. You will not be able to manifest if you're sleeping when the world sleeps. So you got to learn how to get up when everybody's sleeping. You only have 24 hours in a day. You got to learn to manage the time that is given to you. This means that you can't binge watch your favorite television show every day. This means that you can't be on social media every day. This means that you can't do whatever you want all day and think you're gonna manifest and become this person and achieve this feat. It's not gonna happen.
Number two, you got to surrender comfort. I, I need you to get out of your comfort zone. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to achieve it, if you're going to become it, you've got to break out of your comfort zone. Some of you, you have financial goals, you have relational goals, you have health goals, but you're comfortable. You're comfortable in the current toxic relationship you're in. You're comfortable being overweight. But I'm just wondering if there's anybody that's listening to me that's just flat out tired of being comfortable. Number three, past versions of yourself. There is an irritation there is an anguish and a pain that we all carry when we show up in a new season, the old version of ourselves. Every season requires a new version of yourself. Another version of discipline and focus and intentionality. You gotta sacrifice the old you. I know you keep celebrating small wins and what you accomplished five years ago, two years ago, what you did in high school. I need you to find a mirror. I need you to say goodbye to the old version of yourself. In the next three to six months, you're gonna make you proud. The next thing that's gotta go is fear, pride, and ego. For many of us, fear is disguised as rational and practical, and, and fear is disguised as a planning agent. I'm just planning out the process and I'm just gonna wait. I'm just kind of walking myself through everything and, 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 and processing everything. And so fear cloaks, fear disguises itself as, as process. And, and I'm talking to you. I need you to find a mirror and I need you to bind up the spirit of fear. And I need you to tell yourself, I am not afraid. I am not afraid. If you were to ask me, what do I fear? I don't fear starting. I fear never starting and sleeping on my potential. I'm terrified of not manifesting and becoming the version of myself I was destined to be. So the next thing you're gonna to have to sacrifice is that vice. Now listen, I, I don't know what your vice is. If you're trying to lose weight, your vice could be ice cream, chips, cupcakes, cookies. If you're trying to be financially fit, your vice could be splurging on clothes and entertainment and food and recreation. Sometimes you're gonna to have to surrender that month, that quarter, that year. It takes a lifetime of discipline. Can you surrender what you have possessed? Can you surrender what is possessing you? Some of you are possessed by social media. It's no longer a servant, it is a master. Social media is a beautiful servant but it is a terrible master. Can you surrender social media? Can you surrender your time? Can you surrender yourself? Can you surrender your mind? Can you surrender your will? Can you stop choosing what's killing you? If you're going to achieve it, if you're going to manifest, if you're going to do this thing, then you're going to need some stamina. Come on, believe it. Come on, you got to start speaking that stamina over your life, speaking that endurance over your life. Believe it, believe it. If you're going to be extraordinary and you can't make ordinary sacrifices, there are levels to sacrifice. There's sacrifices that everybody makes, sacrifices in every scene of our lives. And then there are some extraordinary sacrifices. You can't have the future if you can't surrender something that's no longer serving you. You cannot manifest. You cannot become the next version of yourself. You cannot experience a higher quality of life unless you sacrifice there are some things that you love too much there's some people that you've kept in your life they are toxic they add no value they are no longer serving your vision it's time for the next version of yourself snap out of it this version of you is not going to carry you in this next season you're going to have to sacrifice who you used to be Be intentional about bringing forth positive transformation in your life. Your future self. Your future self. Your future self will thank you. Imagine what your life would look like if you decided 
that you will not stay stuck. Imagine what your life would look like if you decided that you refuse to give up. And I need the present day version of you to invest in your dreams. Because if you grind now, you, my friend, will shine later. No, it's not going to be easy. I'm not going to tell you that lie. There are going to be a lot of long nights. There are going to be a lot of days that you want to quit. There are going to be a lot of days that you trip, slip, and fall. And you have to muster up the energy to get yourself back up. But what you can never do is accept losing. You know the mindset, you know the mantra. You never lose. You only learn. And I promise you, all of the hard work that you're putting in today will pay off. And we've got to learn how to execute the day. Give us this day. We've got to learn how to execute the day that you conquer the day. What is it that you can do today to get closer to the fulfillment of that future? To get closer to the manifestation of the future? A few years from now, will you be living the life you've envisioned? Or will you be frustrated or disappointed because you set goals, but you did not take them seriously? Don't negotiate with yourself when it comes to following through on the commitments you have made. Your future self needs you to have the courage to keep going when you face an intimidating challenge. And sometimes you have to extend your hand and hope you're in a circle where somebody will extend the hand back and help pick you up. Because you can't always do it by yourself. Sometimes you gotta ask the right question. Sometimes you gotta be soaring with the right eagles. And they can pull you along until you get yourself in the right mindset. And then we've got to be kind, not only to others throughout our process, but we've got to be kind to ourselves. The problem with many of us is that we're not kind to ourselves. Be kind to yourself. You can be assertive, you can be direct, you can be firm, but you can have a little empathy and a little kindness, not only on others, but on yourself. Because the truth of the matter is you are not going to always feel like doing what you were designed to do. So we've got to condition ourselves for the stretch. With gratitude, we're going to need that coupled with patience. The future takes time to manifest. The future takes time. You're going to have to acquire a different set of skills, a different work mentality. It's going to require you to become a different version of yourself. Remember why you're doing what you're doing. It may be difficult, cumbersome. It may seem impossible. It's difficult, but I'm determined. You push through the pain and get back up each and every time. I need you to believe that in your heart of hearts. You cannot be broken. You're an unbreakable force. And everything that you're doing right now will eventually pay off in the long run. You gotta believe that. You gotta know that. Just look around. All of the people that you see shining, they're only shining because of consistent, relentless grinding. Your daily decisions, your habits, your programming, the way that you think, the way that you talk, the way that you walk, blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice, people that you have to let go, sleep that you have to lose, multiple jobs that you have to work, hours on the end of study, beating on your craft every single day. It's not easy, but it's worth it. There are gonna be nights you're gonna cry yourself to sleep. There are gonna be times you're gonna to wanna to throw in the towel. But if you keep going, your future self will thank you. If you can hear your future self talking to you now, the future you would say thank you for not giving up. I believe in the future.
turn your haters into your motivators. And never let anybody else's opinion be bigger than your own. Understand the struggles that you go through are helping you to get to your destiny. The adversity and hills that you have to run, the mountains that you have to climb, it's taking you to greatness. So I'm telling you, don't run from the adversity. Don't run from the problem. Because if you don't face it, you can become it. It's gonna make you stronger. It's gonna make you better. Because you're overcoming the sour taste of now to get to the sweet taste of later. You adjust to all the different personalities of your teachers and professors and enjoy those that are super cool, but stay mentally prepared for those that are stressors. Blessings seem to find you because the universe conspires to make sure everything falls into place because you've got so much heart, passion, and desire. Your fire keeps burning, but at times it starts to fizzle. But you remember you owe it to your future self, and that gas turns that fizzle into a sizzle. You want to leave a legacy and contribute to the greater good. So for now, it's the uncomfortable discipline and sacrifice. Because the cash out in the future means today you got to pay the price. So that means when your friends ask, can you go? Your heart wants to say yes, but your willpower says no. Because Mr. Jones Thermochemistry 3202 ain't no joke. And so you got to be locked in and stay woke. Because he's all about business and doesn't give any rope. So if you miss any assignments or fail any tests, you have very little hope of passing his class. But you will pass his class and you will pass it with flying colors. Because you, my friend, are an academic hustler. And thus you put in the time, the effort, and ask all the right questions to make sure all of your bases are covered. The vultures will hate. You tried to give them vision, but they never put on the right frames. And thus their sight was blurry, and their gray reflected it. And now they want to throw shade at you, but your shield deflected it. You tell them winning in progress over here, so please eliminate the negative vibe. It's time to remove them from your circle and find yourself a positive tribe. Because misery loves company. But that misery cannot have any of your companionship because everybody on your team is working as a unit to come back and win the championship. You owe it to your future self to make money moves in and out of the classroom because time waits for no one. And whether you succeed or fail, it will pass soon. Walk with character and integrity so your reflection in the mirror is who you want to see. Your future self is counting on your current self to set the tone and make sure your future is not only bright, but powerful and strong for mediocrity. Your future self is counting on your current self to never take shortcuts and never lack integrity because the day will come for you to walk with character and have clarity. Greatness is your destiny, but at times you must reboot your mental computer because every step you take today will directly affect your future. This is a great day to win.